Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming, and thank you, Audio Kinetic, for organi organizing this event. <laughs> so, who are we? Berto is a senior audio programmer, and I'm Martin, a senior technical audio designer. We both work at Remedy, which you probably know from games like Max Payne, Alan Wake, and Quantum Break. We are based in Espoo, Finland. We are currently working on three games. Control, which is a multi-platform game we are developing with, with 505 Games, which will be out in 2019 for console and PC, PC platforms. Then we are working with Smilegate on our first first-person shooter, which is Crossfire HD. More specifically, we are uh, creating the single player campaign mode for it. And finally, Vanguard, a small development team whose mission is to challenge conventions and to prototype and ship, ship uh, new types of ongoing live multiplayer game experiences. And we also have a dedicated in-house engine and tools team. This is the audio team, the current one. It has been growing over the years. Uh, Pertu is going to tell you a bit about some of our past and current audio tech, and I'm going to go through some of our sun implementation and system design. Let's start with Quantum Break. <laughs> the number one killer is time. It destroys us all. When Paul came back, he took away the only person who could stop the end of time. My brother, Will. Thing is, when time broke and changed Paul, it changed me too. So Quantum Break is available on Xbox One and PC. It was released in 2016, and the audio team was about 10 people, including full-time outsourcers at the end of the production. Before we start on the topic of gameplay music in Quantum Break, I would like to thank the composers who helped, it, uh, helped make this happen by delivering great content. I think actually Mats is in the room today with us. Hello. <laughs> So, uh, time breaking down is a big part of what Quantum Break is about. We needed the gameplay music to react to it. Real-time time stretching is one of the main things we wanted to try with this game. The problem is, Audio Kinetic doesn't recommend doing that with <laughs> in their documentation. Using the wise time stretch effect plugin obviously messes with the playback speed and the music system doesn't keep track of these changes. Well, we did it anyway, <laughs> and almost regretted that decision. So what about time stretching the whole music when time stops or slows down? It sounds nice, but it breaks some transitions when we can hear some clicks, but nothing too dramatic. One problem, though, is that time stretching percussive instruments a lot like 16 times doesn't sound good. 
So what about only then stretching non-percussive instruments and muting the rest? In order to do that, all the music in Quantum Break is split into percussive and non-percussive tracks. The other benefit of this is that we can affect the percussive and non-percussive tracks in different ways, not only regarding time stretching. It was a bit of a pain for the composers, actually, because they had to make sure that there was some signal at any time in the non-percussive tracks. This meant we would always hear something and we would never have complete silence when the music is, is time stretched like 16 times. So this solves the first issue, but creates a new one. Now, as soon as we start using time powers, both tracks are, are out of sync until the end of the current music segment, which is the reason for the third track. It's an exact copy of the second one content-wise, the idea is that the second track is the one being time stretched when time slows down and it's heard only at that point. And the third track is not time stretched ever and it's heard only when time is not slowed down. We simply crossfade between two, these two depending on if time is slowed down or not. So when time is slowed down and the music plays at normal speed, the Percussive and non-percussive instruments are always in sync, except for a few clicks here and there, it works okay. In addition to the use of time stretching, the music is affected in real time by a few more things like EQ, delay, harmonizer, tremolo, and distortion. Actually, the frequency of the tremolo is synced to the tempo. Every time the main character uses his time powers, the tremolo modulates the input signal randomly over either triplets, 16 notes, sextolets, or 30 second notes. Some time powers can potentially be active simultaneously. So we needed this, oh, sorry, we needed this big nested bus hierarchy here where each bus has its own effects and RTPC curves. The performance is okay because we could bypass some effects when they were not needed. Um, time stretching had to be done in the interactive music hierarchy, so we had to be careful with the number of instances playing simultaneously. It ended up being okay, although that screenshot, that screenshot here shows only the music side of things. We used real-time real time stretching on many more things, but I will get to that. So. Here is an example of time powers. I'm going to show you a few of them. This is a time blast, and it uses harmonizer and high pass filter. Is it loud enough? I'm okay. Okay. Uh, a second one, time dodge, with like an optional slow motion when, when you aim at the end of this power. Uh, this one uses time stretch, EQ, tremolo for the slow motion part, and a peak limiter to keep a nice controlled loudness level when only the time stretched non percussive instruments are heard. Oops. And this is how it sounds like. Then time rush, with again an optional slow motion when you aim at the end. It uses time stretch, EQ, tremolo for the transitions, and the same peak limiter again.
you probably heard a few clicks. It's exactly the problem we were mentioning before that that using the tab stretch in the music system messes up with a few things. <laughs> but well, it's, it's okay, manageable. <laughs> uh, then time shield, which is a bit different, uses some um, EQ, tremolo. Actually, the frequency of the tremolo here is synced to the tempo, like we discussed before. And some delay, which I'm actually not super happy about because it makes the tremolo a bit harder to distinguish. But it's part of the whole thing. Let's hear it. And you may have heard there is some kind of progression through it. So when you activate this shield as a player, you know when it's going to end by just listening to it. Uh, oh, and by the way, yes, this track was composed by Mats, who is hopefully still in the room. Yeah. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so now, unstable objects. Um, these are basically obstacles that the player has to overcome by using the time powers. Technically, they are animations, the playback of which randomly plays forward and backward at a variable speed. And time powers have an impact on the playback speed. Rewinding objects are quite similar, but the player here controls the playback directly. Um, they can play forward and backward and pause at any time. And again, the time powers have an impact on the speed of the animation playback. So, as a player with these special objects, we can, we can pause or reverse playback direction at any time. And time powers can slow down or freeze these objects in time. So how do we make sound for these? Well. Granular synthesis <laughs> could be a great option. But back then, <laughs> there was no granular synthesis plugin in WISE. So we created our own called QGrain, where Q stands for quantum, with the help of Vesan Norillo from Sibelius Academy. It looks like this. Uh, most of the parameters are very common for a granular synthesizer. But an interesting addition is this uh, forward-backward parameter which controls the grain playback direction. For example, all the unstable objects had this kind of setup where the timeline position RTPC is the playback position of the animation. It controls where in the input audio file the plugin generates grains from. And the timeline speed RTPC controls if the grains are played forward or backward. The main layers of these unstable and rewinding objects are made with granular synthesis, and normal one shot sounds are used for the impacts. The voice volume and the voice volume envelope of which are controlled by the timeline speed RTPC. So let's see and listen to a few examples of unstable objects.
Oh, in this one, notice how the, the time powers affect the audio. And some examples of rewinding objects. Okay, um, time travel sequences. So these sequences were not worth spending hundreds of hours on, like more systemic features or, or bigger content. We needed a, a cheap and easy way to make some audio for these two moments, only using the tools and the features we already had. There wasn't time to create new unique content either. So how do we travel through time in Quantum Break? By using a time machine, of course. It looks like this from the outside and this from the inside. Basically, when you want to go back in time, you take the bottom right entrance and you walk all the way counterclockwise. And when you want to travel to the future, you, want you enter the time machine from the bo bottom left entrance and you go through it clockwise. In the example I'm going to show you soon, we are traveling back in time. So, visually and audio-wise, we wanted everything to react to which direction you are traveling in through time. Um, an important point that we also wanted to convey is that you can change direction or speed at any time, and it's going to affect how time evolves around you. One more thing is that we wanted audio and, and visuals to be perfectly synchronized. As you travel in time through the time machine, you see remnants or ghosts of the previous and future travelers. To sonify these ghosts, we just used generic breathing sounds, whispers and laughter, and processed them with our granular synthesizer, so they could be easily played backward when traveling to the past. On top of that, they are also time stretched when the player stops walking and time freezes around them. In the time travel sequences, um, s effects are abstract sounds that are visually in sync with lighting and VFX. Some are samples processed with the granular synthesis, and some are other kinds of real-time synthesis, using um, wire source plugins as SoundSynthWeed and Synth1. Again, we use time stretch here to freeze them in time when the player stops moving. For music, we use time stretching again for when time stops. But in terms of playback direction, it was trickier to deal with because granular synthesis would have messed it up too much. We needed another way to change the direction of the playback at any time. So what you can see here is the music segment with the music content playing normally. And this is the same music segment with the content being reversed. But we couldn't choose just switch between music segments by syncing to the same time in the other music segments because both tracks are mirrored. So the beginning of the reverse track is the end of the, the original one. For example, at uh, the marker 13.3, where is the pointer? Is it this one? Yeah. Uh, ooh, 
I can't see. <laughs> well, <laughs> where is it? <laughs> I think, yeah, this, this, this marker here. If you look at the waveform here, um, it looks like on the, on the previous track, if you go at the same like um, time code, you don't find the same, even reverse, you don't find the same kind of waveform. You have actually to go to the end of the track, and there I really can't see, but I think it's here. You can see the reversed waveform we have just seen. So it's exactly the purpose of all of these markers. And this is how we had to set up the transition rule, so the sig point at is at the right location, depending on, on which marker is at the start of the next beat, when the transition is requested. Because of how many voices are playing simultaneously, we'll, with all of these instances of wise time stretch and Q grain, it was really tricky to make it all work together. Also, the fact that the time machine is a torus didn't help with for tracking the player character position and direction relative to the time machine. I will spare you the, the details, but I can explain more at the end if you are interested. But let's listen to the result now. Sorry, this video capture is a bit long. <laughs> so now it's time for Pertu to tell you a bit about our tech. <laughs> 